we had full intentions of doing um, sort of an interactive interview where we speak to each other, but we realized that we're both entirely too vain to see our faces from the non-internet angle, so we're yes. just going to look directly at the camera and at our reflections, or well, rather the display, yeah. you know, so it's sort of like we're interacting. Um, I'll grab her tits every so often to provide interaction. Could you please <laughs> talk a little bit about the syphilitic spread of your incredibly huge project, Dr. Sketchies? Well, Dr. Sketchies is my perverse little child. It's an alternative drawing class that I started in 2005 at a tiny little cafe in Brooklyn, and it is now in 70 cities around the world, everywhere from Tokyo to Tennessee. And I credit it all, I guess, to the power of incredibly hot girls. I mean, you modeled for it. I did, and <laughs> that was a huge honor. I modeled in L.A. and in San Diego, and it was a really good time. Mm. Beasties and all. Yes, though you almost got shut down by the vice police, I believe, in San Diego. Yeah, they thought pasties were a little risque. Bastards. And I think, I don't remember how we made that work in the end. But hey, we're mm. here now. And in light of this spread, you have a European tour coming up. I do. In May, I'm going to Paris for an art show that I'm in at Cabinet de Curieux, which a Coil House co-contributor, Nadia Lev, is also in, I believe. And after that, I'm going to Berlin and possibly Helsinki and Amsterdam as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're on the European continent, you should check out my website and um, come and experience Molly Crabapple Mayhem in person. The problem with people seeing me in person is they won't see me from the approved angle, though. I think that if you break your neck just the right way <laughs> and attach a light <laughs> just right here, you can make it work. I believe in you. I I think you can do it. I've been experimenting <laughs> with putting a piece of plexiglass in front of my face and airbrushing like slight flesh-colored overlays next to it. That sounds kind of hot. I think and, so. And in a sort of Cronenberg way. It'd have a collar and the mm -hmm. face. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. A bit like Crash. You have also been doing some large-scale artwork lately, which is difficult for someone who works in pen and ink, as you do. Mm -hmm. uh, and how big are these things you're doing? These things are 30 by 40 monstrosities. And just because they're so big, that does not mean that my detail is any less tiny. Not a severe... Your detail is the tiniest baby. <laughs> my... <laughs> Dude, my detail is as tiny as your cock is large. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, <laughs> laughing. No, no. There goes the goth demographic. Ruined. So I'm working on a case of carpal tunnel here. I take it very seriously. My last piece was a commentary on the election with pigs, donkeys, uh... Elephants and cattle. It was very true to life. Yeah, it was. It was all divided by social class, just the way the universe is. Very, very nice. Uh, and can we see that on your website? You can. www.mollycrabapple.com okay, And there is more uh, that you have to tell us about. You have a really exciting new project coming up. I do. I am working on uh, Scarlet Takes Manhattan, which is a lesbian love story set in 1880s New York to be published by Fugu Press. It has a social climbing showgirl, mm -hmm. a theater impresaria, Tammany Hall, and boxers. Mm. How many boxers? Two boxers. Two boxers. Excellent. I'm doing it with John Levitt, who is my conspirator in crime at Dr. Ah, Sketchy's yes. Anti-Art School. Good man. Good man, John Levitt. Slightly tipsy, but good. Well. <laughs> Not that we should talk, right? No. no. Journalism. Journalism uber all is.